I'm Sheila Malcolmson. I'm the member of the legislature for Nanaimo. I'm talking to you from Gabriola Island. And I come from a long line of passionate readers, uh, which I'm especially grateful for, my mom and my grandmother especially. What was my favorite book as a child? I read so many books. I was a total bookworm, a bit of a nerd, but the one that I think about the most often is a novel, a kid's novel called Floating Island. And I had to try to find the name of the author, Anne Parrish. It's a story of a family of dolls who in a, are shipwrecked in their dollhouse. It gets swept off a cargo ship and they have adventures as they try to reunite as a family on the island. They get thrown into tide pools and they, I think for me, it was both the adventures, the family, and also how much nature they encountered being picked up by a parrot and flown across the island. And it's just, um, it was a rip roaring read and I'm sure I, I snuck uh, reading under the pillow with my flashlight, uh, just ripping through the pages as I read it again and again. What was a recent book I've read? I've just read a series of books kind of accidentally that all have this theme of abandoned children and the resilience of young kids. And so this is the one that I've actually got in my hand, Michael Crummy, The Innocence, about a brother and sister whose parents die uh, and they look after each other and carry on living in a outpost community, nobody else but them. But I've also read just recently Dutch House by Anne Patchett. And like a lot of people I think have read this year, uh, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Uh, so all very different stories and and I came from a family that you know I was never abandoned I mean I grew up in the 70s so we were by today's measure probably kind of left to our own devices in a way that parents today wouldn't let us do but um, but there are stories that you know are heartbreaking all three of these novels that I've read recently but um, but also just a testament to how imaginative and uh, and how much siblings look after each other and what a gift that is to have brothers and sisters that have that very special bond and, and, um, and how only children have to be that much more tough and resilient to uh, be their own, their own community. What other resources do I use at the library? I'm mostly a fiction reader from the library. Every once in a while I pick up uh, nonfiction and kind of resource materials. Sometimes uh, old uh, Monty Python DVDs. Um, but you know what, I want to just acknowledge especially how much the library is a gathering place. A lot of vulnerable people and people without their own access to internet and navigation supports really rely on librarians. They're heroic. And across Canada, this is a totally new um, kind of community need and use and a reason that we have to, as politicians, uh, at budget time, we have to make sure that we're protecting and resourcing libraries because uh, the biggest gift we can give people is a little mini community and then the resources and the access to storytelling and uh, and literature. You know, we're, um, we're very grateful to the library community for providing all those supports. How do I think my life story affects the kind of books that I'm drawn to? I grew up running around in the woods and more in my adult life playing in tide pools. Uh, so I'm, I'm really drawn to those themes in the stories that I read. And, and when I am living in the big city, you know, I get uh, that reconnection to nature and the stories of naturalists and scientists by reading those uh, books, you know, Barbara King Solver's books have always just pulled me in so beautifully, that meld of, of storytelling and immersion into nature. But it, but it goes in all kinds of directions, you know, to have the gift of being able to drop into somebody else's story, the um, Indigenous authors, the 
uh, people of color in Canada and around the world that are that are writing such beautiful and powerful stories just allows me to um, stand in another person's shoes for even the briefest time or at the at the thinnest um, you know, the most superficial level it's it's something that uh, that builds compassion and empathy and solidarity just through the pages of a book it's quite magic what does the library mean to me library means a, a place of equality you know, if you didn't grow up with a mom like i did who read stories to me and my brothers and sisters every night and and uh you know in 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 scented a, a lifetime of passion for reading you know it's never too late for that you know a librarian can help you navigate that um, it provides shelter for people it provides for um a, an addicted reader uh, you don't need to have a big budget and go out and buy books you can just continue to to churn through that next series and and it also means that we can kind of bust out of our mold. Like I read a lot of Dick Francis mystery novels through the pandemic, you know, they were just very easy. And, uh, but, you know, I, I love that, you know, a librarian can say, oh, if you like that, then you might like this too. And, and so we don't get caught in a, in a rut. You know, the library does all those things as well as providing shelter and, and community and, and a, friendly face to, to people that might be missing that in their lives. How has my access to this level of information affected my political career? I recognize the, the privilege that I've had, always having had books around in the house, always seeing other people reading, my mom and dad, my grandparents always had a book at their side. Uh, and. Uh, and that's opened worlds to me. You know, I'm a fast reader, so I can plow through a lot of legislative material quickly. Uh, I can uh, tap into stories that I've heard in the past that give me more connection to a life of poverty or what it might feel like to be an orphan or a victim of domestic violence. All things that I'm privileged not to have experienced directly, but, but a really good author can give me that you know, spine tingling uh, feeling of connection that then, um, you know, absent me having those experiences myself, being fortunate enough not to have had those experiences that I can draw on them. And, uh, and I hope sometimes be a good storyteller myself, because it's a real way for us to not just talk about policies or budgets, but to talk about the people whose lives are being changed by childcare or affordable housing or a new innovative way of of teaching learning at the university uh, so all of those are are because of the power of of words and and books are at the core of that what projects am i working on lately i'm working a lot right now um, in nanaimo at trying to find ways for us to to better support vulnerable communities and to better uh, have all the different agencies come together. Uh, no criticism implied. There's so much human resource that's going into uh, to preventing petty crime and uh, homelessness and needles on the street, you know, but we've just got so much ground to make up and I recognize that we're at real risk of burning out the front line who have just been really holding it all together during you know, a decade plus of really not having enough funding and investment in their work. So, so right now I'm working with uh, uh, police and Island Health and the city uh, to see if we can test drive a model that uh, kind of uh, does uh, kind of an incubation or a coming together of heads to figure out when there is a particular member of the community that seems to be falling through the cracks. Uh, how can we have a coordinated agency response? It takes it away from police, puts it more into mental health and addictions workers. And then my job is to make sure that they're well enough resourced that we can do that work well. That's just one of many projects, but it um, we know how how deep the need is and uh, and we can't rely on police to solve 
um, our long standing social problems. I'm Sheila Malcolmson, and I believe in strong libraries, strong communities.